Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be diving into some stats and numbers for the Port St. Lucie market. What I'm gonna be doing in this video is we're gonna be going over the quarter one of 2023 and comparing it to quarter four of 2022. This is a six month period where we are sure to find out some trends on the Port St. Lucie market. So if you are someone that is researching whether you are buying or selling in the Port St. Lucie market, this would be a great video for you. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is I'm going to take the stats from Q4 and Q1 and go over those stats individually for each of the six zip codes. And then once we're done going over the stats, we are then going to see if we can gain any trends that the data is telling us for that zip code. And once we're done dealing with the numbers and the trends, I am going to talk specifically about my personal experiences in the field during this time period by using experience experiences that I've had in my deals over the last six months. So I hope I'm able to bring you some value today in this video. And as always, if there is something that I don't touch on in this video or you still have more questions, then please feel free to comment below or you can email me. My contact information is in the description below. I would love to talk more with you about any questions that you may have. Now, without further ado, let's dive right into the stats. But before we go into the stats, I just wanted to make sure I told you all of the stats that are covered in this video are going to be linked in the description below on a Google spreadsheet so that you can refer back to these stats whenever you would like to after watching this video. So, okay, starting off with the 34986 zip code or St. Lucie West, in Q4, we had 142 sales, and in Q1, we had 143 sales. And now the average sales price went from 438,000 in Q4 up to 464,000 in Q1. The price per square foot changed from $220 per square foot in Q4 to $223 per square foot in Q1. I will be including the highest price per square foot sold during these time periods as well because it has come to my attention that while people do love knowing the average price per square foot as a good starting point and a good overall metric some people do also like to know where the ceiling is at especially if you are someone that owns one of the more unique properties so the highest price per square foot sold in q4 2022 was 374 dollars per square foot and the highest sold in q1 was 352 dollars per square foot and the last stat in the 34986 zip code Code is going to be the list to sold ratio. In Q4 of 2022, sellers were getting 98% of the list price. And now in Q1 2023, sellers were getting 97% of the list price. So just a slight dip there. Based on the stats that we can see here for the 34986 zip code, clearly houses are taking longer to sell from Q4 to Q1. And this is pretty consistent throughout all of the zip codes. This is largely because of the higher interest rates, reducing the buyer pool and just accumulating inventory. So now now, the few buyers that we have are taking their time and are able to see more houses and have more options and have more time to process. But it is worth mentioning that if a house is more turnkey and priced right, either or, or even both, these can still result in these houses going very fast and even sparking bidding wars, which we've seen in the last six months as well. The other trend that we saw during this time period in the 34986 zip code was obviously the increase in average sales price. And I looked into this further and I would attribute the big jump from these two quarters in price based on the disparity in houses that were priced over 700,000 and higher being sold during these two time periods. In Q4 2022, only three homes were sold in that price range, while in Q1 2023, 12 homes were sold at a sales price of over 700,000. Now this is largely in the PGA Village market. This is where all of these were sold. And this can be attributed to the sellers either not wanting to sell during the holiday season, or maybe they were listed through the holiday season and buyers didn't want to purchase purchase until after. And this could also be people in PGA Village downsizing from these larger homes that are on the golf course or just capitalizing on the high demand to get into PGA, especially for these larger, more luxury estates inside of PGA Village. So if you're someone that is looking for the $700,000 to over a million dollar house in PGA Village, then this is a great sign that you are going to have more inventory and more options going forward. Next up is the 34987 zip code or tradition. Starting with the closed sales, there was 85 closed sales in Q4 2022 and 121 closed sales in Q1 2023. The average sales price went from 541,000 in Q4 to 517,000 in Q1. And the price per square foot, however, did stay the same during these two time period at $246 per square foot. And the highest price per square foot in Q4 was $352 and in Q1 was $355. The diesel market went from 38 days to 60 
59 days on market and the list to sold ratio sellers in q4 2022 were getting 97 percent of the list price and sellers in q1 were getting 98 percent of the list price so just a slight bump there the interesting thing we can see from the data here for tradition is that there was a significant price decrease while the price per square foot still stayed the same. So looking into this, I noticed that almost twice as many homes that were under 2000 square feet were sold during Q1 versus Q4. In Q4 of 2022, only 26 homes that were under 2000 square feet were sold, while in Q1, 56 were sold at the same square footage under 2000 square feet. So that can greatly attribute to the decrease in the average price while they were still the same price per square foot just having that many smaller homes is going to fluctuate that number another factor that may have also affected that average sales price is the additional 40 closed sales that they had during q1 versus q4 so there was more inventory during this time period and they took longer to sell that's typically a formula for a decreased price but this is a great option if you are someone that is looking in the tradition area because this is a good trend to see that more inventory is coming to tradition while this is a great area if you are looking to build it's also great for the buyers that are looking to purchase resale in this area as well. And next up, we're going to be talking about the 34984 zip code with the closed sales in Q4 being 96 closed sales. And in Q1, there were 71 closed sales. The average sales price during Q4 and Q1 stayed at around $440,000. The average price per square foot during these time periods was $229 in Q4 and $236 in Q1. The highest price per square foot during during these time periods were $331 per square foot in Q4 and $321 in Q1. Now on to days on market. In Q4, the days on market was 43 days and in Q1, it jumped up to 58 days on market. And the list to sold ratio, sellers were getting 97% of the list price in Q4 and up to 98% of the list price in Q1. This is a small zip code that has very high demand in certain neighborhoods like South Bend, Tesoro, Veranda Garden, gardens, Vikings Landing and South River Shores. And this is what largely attributed to the average sales price staying the same for both of these quarters. What I think attributed to the change in price per square foot while keeping the same average sales price was that in Q4, 66% of these sales were under 2000 square feet, while in Q1, 70% of the sales were under 2000 square feet. And now if you tie that in with having 25 less closed deals at an already small sample size, this is how you're gonna see a higher price per square foot in Q1 one, even though the overall average sales price stayed about the same. For these next three zip codes, the trends are very similar for all three of them. So instead of just repeating myself at the end of the stats of each one of them, I'm just going to give you the stats for these next three zip codes and then briefly talk about the trend that they all share. Starting off with the 34953 zip code, the closed sales in Q4 was 389 sales versus 416 in Q1. The average sales price went from 406,000 in Q4 to 386,000 in Q1. The average price per square foot went from 226 in Q4 to 216 in Q1. The highest price per square foot during these time periods was 328 in Q4 versus 324 in Q1. The days on market in this zip code went from 39 days in Q4 to 56 days in Q1. And then the list to sold ratio, sellers were getting 99% of the list price in Q4 and 98% of the list price in Q1. So again, just a slight dip. We're gonna move on into the next zip code, which we're going to be talking about the 34983 or River Park area of Port St. Lucie. And in Q4, they had 223 closed sales and 216 closed sales in Q1. The average sales price in Q4 was around $370,000 versus about $355,000 in Q1 of 2023. The price per square foot dropped from 226 in Q4 to 216 in Q1. And the highest price per square foot during these time periods was $338 per square foot in Q4 and 365 per square foot in Q1. The days on market for this zip code went up from 36 days to 48 days on market. The list to sold ratio, sellers were getting 98% of the list price in Q4 versus 97% in Q1. Moving on to the last of these three zip codes, which is going to be the 34952 zip code that had 138 closed sales in Q4 and 150 closed sales in Q1 at an average sales price in Q4 of 402,000 
versus 388,000 in Q1, the price per square foot went from 238 in Q4 to 232 in Q1, and the highest price per square foot during these time periods was $381 per square foot in Q4 and $348 per square foot in Q1. Days went from 36 days on market in Q4 up to 50 days on market in Q1. Moving on to the last stat of the zip code, which is the list to sold ratio, sellers were getting 97% of the list price for both quarters during this time period. Now we went over the stats from those three zip codes. You can see that all of them are pretty much similar and saw a 5% decrease in their price and price per square foot while also having a slight increase in days on market. I will say those three had the lowest increase on days on market compared to the other three zip codes in Port St. Lucie. And the reason I also like these three zip codes being together is I feel they also do a really good job at illustrating the real estate market as a whole. And now bringing it back to Port St. Lucie, we are still in a seller's market. Our monthly inventory is still under three months, which by definition is a seller's market. So yes, there is a slight dip in prices. However, prices are not plummeting because we still have such a high demand of buyers wanting to move into Port St. Lucie, even at these high interest rates. All right, now that we are done talking about stats, it is time for me to give you my personal experiences as your boots on the ground in the Port St. Lucie housing market during this time period. The first thing that I've noticed is that houses are appraising for well over the price that we are under contract for. I have seen houses appraised for 10,000 over all the way up to 50,000 over the price that we are under contract. And this is not to say that you can close and then just list the house for that price and get it. However, it is still a positive. This is showing you that there is potential for a higher value in the future along with the appreciation that standard homes accumulate. The second thing that I have noticed is that seller concessions are becoming more and more the normal in this market. I've done deals with seller concessions that were under under asking with seller concessions, at asking price with seller concessions, and even over asking with seller concessions because that house was still very early on the market and the buyer wanted to keep some of that money in his pocket. Because at the end of the day, that is what these seller concessions are all about. When you're having to deal with these interest rates and still higher priced homes, getting these seller concessions to basically finance your closing costs is a huge win and really helps get the deal done. Especially if you are moving into a house where there are some immediate projects or renovating that you are going to need to do. So you're gonna need some of that cash still in your pocket. That is why seller concessions have been huge for helping deals get through during this market. I even found a study that shows that every two out of five homes right now in the current market have seller concessions. So it is not just a Port St. Lucie market thing. This is becoming a real estate market standard right now just to kind of help both sides get what they're trying to get in order to get a deal done where you're happy and the sellers are happy. And that's that's a win-win, so we'll take it. And now if you are watching this and you are thinking, well, I don't want seller concessions, sessions. I just want a lower price. Well, you can get that as well, because if there is a seller that's willing to accept seller concessions, they would likely accept a lower asking price because they're basically netting the same thing. What I'm basically telling buyers is if they are even remotely in the ballpark, even if it's 10 or 20,000 below asking price, throw that offer out there. I'm not sitting here saying, go out there searching for super low ball offers. But what I am saying is if there is a number in your mind that makes sense, then offer it. You really don't know what's going to happen it at least starts a conversation because sellers in this market are not looking to just slam the door shut and say no highest and best like those days are done there is so much going on in this market that the buyers are such a commodity at this moment like i said i'm not telling you to go out there and offer some crazy below asking price offer but i am saying keep your mind open when you see houses because there is likely a deal to be made if they're not too too far from where your number is but it's still worth trying that's what I've seen. I've seen multiple deals throughout this time period where the buyer is, I love this house, but I would really only be comfortable with it if it was at this price. And even though it was 30,000 less than the asking price, we didn't even get a counter. We got the price. And now largely that was because the comps did state that it should have been priced down there, which is what you see in this market right now is a lot of sellers may still be trying to get last year's price, but the comps of now are saying that it should be listed lower. So even though you're getting it below listing, but you're you're also getting it at the right price. Keep that in mind as well. See what the comps are doing, see how it's handling it on the market and come up with a number that works for you because at the end of the day, that's what you should be doing and you never know. They may accept it and they may at least start a conversation with you. And lastly, I know I mentioned this earlier in the video, but it is something that I am continuing to see and I wanted to make sure that I said it again to you during this section of the video. And that is that more turnkey and priced right houses that are in the market are still creating bidding wars. So 
if you see a house that everything is perfect and it's got the new roof, the appliances and everything, and it's priced fair, just understand that is going to go fast and there's going to be multiple people offering on it. And that's just what I've noticed in this market is that yes, there are still bidding wars happening all the time. So just be ready for it if you find the right house. And that is it for my quarter one, 2023 Port St. Lucie market review. I hope I was able to bring you some value today. And I know we went over a lot of stats. So don't forget that the link to the Google sheet with all of the stats is in the description below. And also in the description below is my contact information. So if you know you are going to be buying or selling in Port St. Lucie, please feel free to contact me. I would love to meet with you and see how I can help you with your real estate needs. And also if you are not ready to contact me, then subscribe to this channel so that you are not missing any of my Port St. Lucie real estate content that I'm putting out weekly on this channel. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and have a great rest of your day.